Russia has finally opened a full-fledged and large-scale production of computers, servers and laptops. And also imported 26 materials of pure chemistry for Micron, but let's talk about everything in order. It is very hard to dissuade skeptics that there will never be independent chip production in Russia. Virtually every time we talked about neocras on Russian lithographers, the comments said, lithographers alone will not give anything, you need etching, deposition and other equipment. When news about neocras on etching, deposition and other equipment appeared, people started to write in the comments that the equipment would not work without pure chemistry, and there is no such chemistry in Russia. When there is news about neocras already on everything, including pure chemistry, and even personally about photoresists, then in the comments begin to write that everything is only in the plans, neocras may end in failure, and Russia to pure chemistry, as to the moon. That the neocras could end successfully was somehow not taken into account by the skeptics. In general, it's hard to dissuade people of their belief that nothing will ever happen in Russia. Even showing them not only the contracts and the institutions that have taken them on, but also outlining the entire accompanying political context that simply gives the state no other choice. I agree, it's hard to think, it's easier to point your finger at the finished product. Well, the first products have started to appear. Like we said earlier, in 2024 we are already starting to have things that we talked about two to three years ago and have gotten in the comments for more than once. So, at the beginning of this year it was reported that the Micron plant certified 26 Russian chemical materials for the production of microchips with 180 to 90 nanometer topology for use in mass production. Another 28 are in development. For example, a slurry for chemical mechanical polishing of a semiconductor wafer. The material has been successfully tested. The slurry is used to flatten the surface of the interlevel dielectric and allows the formation of reliable electrical connections in systems with multi-level metallization. Gulnara Kosyanova, general director of the Micron plant, said that the company is ready to fully switch to the use of ultrapure materials in its technical processes. This information is in addition to the recent news that Micron's new lithographers have increased production of document and bank card chips by 2.5 times. That is, in addition to optimizing processes and scaling up production, the plant is also switching to Russian pure chemistry. So the neocras are wrapping up nicely. And the authorities also have intentions to become as independent as possible in chip production and are pursuing them in every possible way. By the way, I've now noticed a new chip in the skeptics. They used to not believe that Russia could make lithographs, other equipment and pure chemistry, but now gradually it's like they're changing the methodology. They write about how all the official media reports are lies. Like, Micron only packages the chips for the cards and makes them overseas. Funny, but until recently it was just the opposite. Micron made chips for Troika transportation cards, but they were encased in a foreign factory. Now a new production line for chip packaging has started operating, and all technological operations of transportation card production are made in Russia. Troika has become 100% Russian. But skeptics will undoubtedly say it's a fake or make up something else. Like, just a three in the rest of the cards. Or the chip for the card is not a microprocessor. So on and so forth. You can come up with any claim you want at any stage, but it doesn't matter anymore. We're seeing a trend, and it's sharply positive. Domestic lithographs, domestic etching and deposition facilities, pure chemistry, and thus domestic production lines at 350 and 130 nanometers are on the way. Later 90 nanometers at deep ultraviolet facilities. And then 28 nanometers at extreme ultraviolet facilities. The more distant future will be determined by both the international political landscape and the alternative chip manufacturing technologies that will have emerged by then. Well now let's move on to another new production. Russia has finally opened a full-fledged and large-scale production of computers, servers and laptops. Yes, it's not just assembly, but full-blown manufacturing that includes soldering circuit boards. And a full cycle of testing and defectoscopy. At the same time, ICL's management is pleased with the desire to use domestic materials and components as soon as they appear and achieve the required quality. Not all Russian consumables meet the requirements for quality production of such a high level, which the plant is concerned with, and most of them are rejected today. This is a fact, no material manufacturer has counted on such needs in the last 30 years. But the search for domestic soldering pastes and other materials is systematically continuing. And we think that in the near future materials of the required quality will appear in Russia, because the demand for them is ensured by the scale of production and it becomes profitable to produce them. In general, in order to organize the production of domestic materials and components in Russia, you need a market for their sale, allowing you to make investments in this area profitable. The economy of a state, regardless of its social order, must make ends meet. 
For this purpose, Russia should already have large-scale production facilities organized, which will be able to buy products in sufficient volumes and recoup these investments. Today, we are just at the stage of scaling up such production facilities. Plants are being built to produce machinery and such production in all areas of industry. For example, automobile factories such as Moskvich, which are hastily loaded with screwdriver assembly of Chinese cars. And it is precisely these plants that, in addition to filling the holes with the shortage of passenger cars, fulfill the most important task of creating potential consumers of Russian materials and components. When such production facilities become sufficiently numerous in Russia, it will become profitable to produce materials and components for them. But even now import substitution is already underway wherever possible. The same is true of the Aziel plant. It currently uses foreign hardware, foreign textolite, foreign electronic component base, and foreign materials. But out of all those foreign cubes, ICL produces what it wants. As is the case in similar industries in any other country. Yes, Russia is in a somewhat different position than, for example, Western countries. We need to aim for a higher proportion of domestic components and a higher proportion of domestic manufacturing equipment. Because in the process of rebuilding our economy after the collapse of the 80s and 90s and protracted unsuccessful attempts to join the global market on equal terms, we meet natural resistance of competitors in the form of the United States, which we can successfully overcome only by relying on a significant percentage of our own self-sufficiency. Here we see a kind of paradox. Until we have regained our economic potential, we need self-sufficiency, which in some sectors is still lacking. Once the potential is restored, self-sufficiency won't be so necessary anymore. We will already be sold the goods we need due to our increased influence in the world. But we'll have her already. Once self-sufficiency is lost again, we will be tempted to isolate ourselves again. That's how we live. So we will need a certain level of self-sufficiency, both in our own and across Russia's potential zone of influence because our main adversary in the form of the US isn't going anywhere. And we will also have to compete with other centers of power in the future. In other words, our current efforts will not be wasted even in the case of normalization of geostrategic relations, which are, to put it bluntly, still quite far away. Therefore, the course to self-sufficiency is the right course. At the same time, as some experts say, full self-sufficiency today is possible with a population of at least 300 million people. With this size of market, Complex industries become profitable because there are enough consumers, and science and industry get enough scientists, engineers, and workers to develop and produce it all. In our case, the formation of a zone of influence around Russia is taking place. The world is splintering into several camps. Russia forms around itself economic alliances and direct economic relations with as many friendly countries as possible. How voluminous it will get for us, I don't know. But the market we're looking for is at least 300 million, we think we'll hit it one way or another. A separate problem for Russia is the level of automation and robotization of production. On the one hand, we don't have enough population for everything. On the other hand, robotization requires large investments, which must pay off, and this is possible for most large-scale robotic lines only on large volumes, which are formed by an array of so-called friendly countries, or rather countries of Russian influence. Thus, Russia has chosen the least painful for its population step-by-step -step way of deepening import substitution. Good thing the US doesn't have enough duct tape and we have time so far, not by the possibility of grey imports. So, what is ASL's production? At the first stage, the plant will produce 300,000 boards annually. Its capacity will be increased to 1 million boards by 2026. ICL estimates that the company will be able to take up to 9% of the domestic motherboard market, partially replacing imports. ICL also plans to provide motherboards to other players in the Russian IT market. Now ICL makes products, computers, laptops, servers, etc. Mainly for the public sector and industry. However, it already has OSEO branded laptops for the retail market in its lineup, which are already available. At the stage of production establishment with small series, the cost of production of motherboards, as a rule, is higher than at foreign contract manufacturing. Therefore, in order to reduce the price for end retail customers, OSEO products have so far utilized motherboards manufactured overseas. However, over time, the company expects to make production in Russia more cost-effective and fully switch to its own soldering in this consumer line as well. The area of the plant exceeds 8,000 square meters. Aziel equipped them with new lines for surface and pin assembly of motherboards, automatic optical inspection and X-ray inspection systems, as well as automated assembly lines and equipment for testing of finished products. All in all, everything was done right. Moreover, it seems that Aziel has taken the matter seriously, 
as it is considering the possibility of building its own plant for the production of textolite, since no one else in Russia can satisfy their high demand. Now the plant buys only experimental batches of Russian textolite to learn how to work with it and to switch to it in the future. It is noteworthy that the cost of a plant to produce textolite in the quantity they need and also for third-party customers is 10 times the cost of their new plant to surface mount printed circuit boards and produce final products based on them. Manufacturing textolite is much more complicated than soldering circuit boards. It is not only radio electronics, but primarily chemistry, physics and precision mechanics. Specialists technologists on production of printed circuit boards have not been produced in our country for more than 10 years. Therefore, ICL is now organizing its own chairs on this topic at Kazan National Research Technological University. At the same time, the Research Institute of Petrochemistry is working out the issue of producing domestic chemistry required for the production of textolite in printed circuit boards. So ICL appears to have taken the job seriously. We think that with such a thorough and comprehensive approach to production, the company can claim to be one of the world leaders in the field of radio electronics production in the not-too-distant future.